So it's possible that Battlefield 2042 has got another year of life support in the pipeline, but we also know that more Battlefield games are currently in production. We don't know exactly what they're going to look like yet, but it got me thinking, what better opportunity than now to talk about what the next Battlefield game should look like? So, g'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today we're going to talk about what the perfect Battlefield game would look like. So in preparation to make this video, I really put my thoughts to what my perfect idea of a Battlefield game is. You know, accounting for everything from the look, the feel, the gameplay, the progression, the maps, the features, all of it. I really took the time to look at what Battlefield is to me as a franchise, when it plays best, when it has offered the most coherent experiences, and most importantly, when it has simply been fun to play. Fun for the casual player, fun for the Giga Sweat, and everyone in between. And of course, when it captured those only in Battlefield moments the best. So to get us started, I want to talk about the look, the feel, and also most importantly, the era in which this Battlefield game would be set in. Now, I know there is significant interest in a sci-fi Battlefield game, a continuation of the much loved Battlefield 2142, for example. However, I do believe that a return to the modern era once again, maybe even the mid to late 2010s timeframe would be the play here. This comes from multiple reasons for me personally. For one, a modern era allows you to flood your game with meaningful customization progression and weaponry without bending the rules of remaining quote-unquote era accurate. This is a problem that Battlefields 1 and 5 had respectively. In order to offer enough, I guess, progression to keep players interested for the long haul, a lot of creative liberties had to be taken that weren't viewed as historically accurate by the community, which also upset a small portion of the community. The modern era has a lot of gear that you can pull from that lets you stay on theme while giving your players a ton of stuff to work through, unlock, and keep them interested. On top of that, the futuristic era, or even the near future era, similar to that of Battlefield 2042, does at times allow for creative freedom to get in the way of balanced gameplay decisions. For example, look at the vehicles in Battlefield 2042 with their stupid amounts of weapon pods that break a lot of the game's in infantry versus vehicle interactions. The near future setting may act as a catalyst for some of those design decisions to take place, and I feel like a more grounded, modern day setting may help to limit that kind of crap. And let's just be honest with ourselves for a second here, the historical eras of World War II and even World War I to a certain extent have been done to death already, and there's only so much you can do in that time frame, again while keeping it somewhat historically accurate, so yeah. Modern day for the win, in my opinion. But speaking of being grounded, I'd also want the game to take on a grittier, more grounded approach to its aesthetic. I want maps to look war-torn, as though they've been a conflict zone for a while, or at least have the respective features in the game to get the maps to that war-torn point. More on that shortly. Battlefield 2042's maps always felt a little too pristine for my liking, if that makes sense. For a game that is meant to be set in a end of the world scenario with crazy weather events and stuff like that, there's a lot of untouched environments in the game that just look pristine as though nothing's actually happening. Battlefield 1, on the other hand, and at times to its credit Battlefield 5, did a really good job of capturing the war-torn feel and just the general atmosphere, and even captured that transition as the game's destruction came into effect. Again, more on that shortly. A return to a grittier look would go a long way in selling the experience of Battlefield again. And as a good segue there, from a visual perspective, we have to ditch specialists entirely as well. I'm sorry, but they just don't work for a core Battlefield game. If you wanted to do a spin-off extraction shooter or a battle royale game with specialists on offer, knock your socks off, it makes sense to use them there. But where they don't work is within the confines of what a traditional Battlefield game is known for. A return to traditional soldiers with less cringy voice lines that are merely part of a larger army provides a much more immersive experience than, well, you know, Battle Grandma and Andrew Tate's off-brand cousin running around in the game. I know the immersion argument is very low on the list of priorities for many players in the Battlefield community, myself included, but it's something that's worth mentioning as it all helps to build this cohesive experience and ties it all together from a visual perspective. But okay, we've gone over some ideas as to what the overarching aesthetic and feel of the game is going to feel like, but let's now actually get into the details, the meat and potatoes, the gameplay. 
obviously what keeps us coming back over and over again to the game on repeat. And well, you know what? What better way to start off than with the most important part of a first person shooter game? The gunplay. Gunplay in the Battlefield franchise has had a rocky history and has taken quite a few forms. Gunplay we see in Battlefield 2042 is as laser beamy as it comes for this franchise with assault rifles in full auto challenging sniper rifles out to distances in excess of 100 meters at times. The point and click nature of the gunplay also removes any degree of skill curve that exists which again is not healthy for your game. So, what should we be aiming for with the next game? Personally, the gunplay from Battlefield Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 4 represents the peak of this franchise in my opinion. The cone of fire and the recoil of the gunplay in those games had weight to them, which meant it rewarded skillful recoil control and effective cone of fire management, all the while not feeling completely unapproachable. That's the word I think I'm looking for. Battlefield 4 in particular offered a pile of weapons for players to use and all of which carried out their own purpose. Some were harder to use but had higher skill ceilings with more effective outcomes and some were vice versa. Some were easier to use but couldn't take you as far if you became better as a player. And then there were also weapons like the AEK which were in a league of their own but the point is is that the core gunplay in those games gave every weapon a role to fill in the grand scheme of things and there was some weight to the weapon due to their underlying mechanics. It felt rewarding to master and welcoming enough for new players to use effectively. I specifically don't mention Battlefield 3 here because while the core gunplay in that game was also great, the suppression in that game was dialed to 11. For those who don't remember, the suppression mechanic would significantly increase your cone of fire bloom if you were shot at but not hit. So if bullets were whizzing over your head or nearby you while you were in cover, you would be suppressed effectively. The idea of this was to give light machine guns a sense of purpose in controlling choke points through lanes of fire. You know, you didn't necessarily need to hit anyone to be effective. The problem with that is that in straight up gunfights, it very much created a first person to shoot automatically wins situation, an advantage to someone who fired the first shot but didn't necessarily hit their target, which wasn't great. So yeah, something akin to Battlefield 4, I think puts us in a very good spot. Noting that we're on the topic of gunplay here, overarching attachment mechanics could also be touched on here too. There's been a lot of innovation in the first person shooter space lately in regards to how weaponry can be modified and how modular everything is. This has some benefits to it, but it can also muddy the waters between different weapons and what their actual roles are. For example, in Battlefield 2042, you can turn the M5A3 into an SMG-esque weapon at the drop of a hat and then change straight back to a long range build using the plus system. Now, this does does have some value in allowing players to be prepped for any situation they come across, but it also means that some weapons lose purpose incidentally by having less customization or flexibility through their customization. In Battlefield 4, you could only mount a scope, a muzzle, underbarrel, and rail attachment. None of these attachments would impact your damage per shot or your overall damage over range, your rate of fire, none of that. They would just have small impacts on your weapon's handling. It wasn't like you could take the Scar H from Battlefield 4 and turn it into some faster firing scar L. No, the point of the attachments was to provide small buffs to certain elements of the gun's recoil or cone of fire handling to make it better for your particular playstyle. There was none of this total conversion business going on, which I think meant that each gun kept an identity that had a certain role to fill, which I thought was a much healthier approach by comparison to what we have now. So attachments wise for this new Battlefield game, let's keep it simple. Let's keep things down to say rails, under barrels, optics, muzzles, but no barrel length though. And that's it. No stocks, no magazines, no ammo types. Keep it simple. It works for the better in ensuring every weapon has a role to play out. Changing tune here, classes. Now, look, is this even an argument? Battlefield has always had classes. And I think from both a readability perspective and from a perspective of balance, classes need to remain at the forefront and core of this game too. Bring back the standard assault, recon, support, and engineer classes as we all know and love them. And we're laughing to the bank. Hell, I would even suggest bringing back weapon restrictions as well. I know that may seem a little controversial having just come from a game that doesn't restrict your weapons to a certain class, 
But again, it just added a bit more flavor to the classes in the game, in my opinion. Let's also remember that Battlefield 4 had certain categories of weapons that were universal across the four classes as well. I think your shotguns, DMRs, and carbines were the categories of weapon that could be used across every class, if memory serves me correctly. Which basically meant that every class had an opportunity to be effective in any range they were faced with, but they also had, and I'm very aware of the pun here, specialties to lean into as well. It was a good way to go. So that is one section of this perfect Battlefield game that we're crafting that I don't see we'll see too many disagreement on. But we do now also have to talk about the can of worms that is player counts. Battlefield 2042 took the bold call to double its game's player counts to 124 players, 64 versus 64. And look, as a longtime player of large scale first person shooter games like Planetside, I found the attempt interesting in concept and was curious to see how that size of game would play out in a battle. Battlefield game. And look, under different circumstances, such a decision may have worked out for the better for the franchise. But that's not what played out. The decision to move to a maximum player count of 124 in each game had multiple flow-on effects to the rest of the game that did it really no favours whatsoever. Maps needed to become bigger to house the increase in player count, but also felt empty and had no natural flow to them as a result due to how their points of interest were located. Vehicles were also scaled up in occupancy across the board to host more players, but this also gave vehicles cheesier weapons to deal with the expected increase in infantry players running around on the map. And on these giant maps, when the action would finally concentrate on certain areas, the population density meant that the maps couldn't effectively host such a large amount of players. Sometimes bigger is not always better, and for those reasons, I feel like Battlefield needs to return to the 32 versus 32 player game sizes at a maximum. Those match sizes produced just enough chaos to make it feel like a Battlefield game, but still housed ample opportunity for you as a player to have an impact on the wider match that was taking place around you. The feeling is incredibly rare in these larger scale format games, so I really think we need to dial back and return to roots a little bit in the player count department. But that also segues us nicely to talk about maps. And on the topic of maps, I feel like we need to take a walk down memory lane to really work out what's been done previously and where we can learn from that. A key challenge Battlefield has always had as a franchise for that matter is balancing the vehicle and infantry interaction in the game and also giving ample opportunity for each side of the game to have its, you know, available play spaces. Infantry need ample spaces to rumble around in and, you know, take cover from vehicles from time to time, but vehicles also need to have environments where they perform best and where there's less cover for infantry to hide around in just so that they can do their thing. So it's not easy to do, but there are most certainly maps out there from previous Battlefield games that definitely get the balance right. We're talking about maps like Caspian Border, Arica Harbor, North Shark Canals, Operation Firestorms, VOD 311, Strike at Karkand. All of these are maps that I felt had fantastic points of interest and a mix of open environments for good vehicle action as well. The balance felt really, really good. Caspian Border in particular is a great map and one that I feel should really be used as a bit of a gold standard for how future maps should be designed and balanced accordingly. I mean, hell, even in Battlefield 2042, Spearhead is an excellent example of a well-designed map that provides this good mixture of open field fighting for vehicles and close close CQC action for infantry. So again, a good balance there. And I know this one's also going to be a little bit controversial here, but I also feel like, you know, the return of some CQC infantry only maps as well wouldn't go astray. I actually really enjoyed the close quarters expansion that came with Battlefield 3. And while many did criticize the expansion pack for not feeling like a Battlefield and more like a Call of Duty adaptation, I thought it added a bit of variation to the Battlefield experience and kind of added a new twist on things that were enjoyable. So yes, while I do believe that Battlefield still needs to stick to its core of, you know, being this combined arms Battlefield game, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing some more CQC maps in the process as well. One thing we can learn though from Battlefield 2042 in particular is that we really need to limit the use of verticality. There are a ton of maps in Battlefield 2042 where people can just abuse verticality to create firing angles that quite frankly shouldn't exist in the first place. Manifest in particular is a map that struggles with the amount of verticality that is present. With the container yards, you'll see McKay's all up in them, just creating these firing angles that you don't expect to be there and it makes the experience of moving around the map 
frustrating and just impossible to do so effectively. Some verticality and some select firing angles to have on a map is good, but if you overdo it and give players total freedom to unlimited amounts of verticality, you've got a pretty rough end product there. But this also puts us on a really good time to talk to one of Battlefield's main features that really doesn't feel like exists in Battlefield 2042. Destruction. Now look, I'll be the first person to say that destruction needs to come back immediately. It's a staple of the Battlefield franchise, has been done so for years, and it needs to return with a lot more gusto than what is present in Battlefield 2042. However, it needs to be done with some degree of restraint. It's already hard enough to develop maps when you've got to take into consideration infantry and vehicle interactions at the same time. Throw destruction in there and the fact that explosive weapons can completely level the cover that may separate infantry versus vehicle sight lines, and you've got a really complex issue to manage there. Once again, looping back and calling out to Battlefield Bad Company 2, I felt like that was a really good example of how to manage destruction in the game. Yes, entire buildings could come down and you could destroy most of the walls on most buildings in the game, opening up the sight lines quite a significant amount. But on the flip side of that, when the buildings finally hit, you know, I guess critical turning point and started to collapse around you, the wreckages of the buildings themselves became a new form of cover. So the map went through this sort of dynamic process of there being ample cover, then a little less cover and then a lot less cover and then more cover again it actually worked really well and matched the chaos that you would find in games like that so i feel like that style of destruction and how it interacted with the maps is a good basis to sort of design our destruction system around here as well and i mentioned points of interest very very loosely earlier but again i feel like a focus needs to be replaced on how points of interest on the maps that battlefield produces flow from one to another nowadays we'll often see a lot of game modes like rush or Breakthrough, for example, that center themselves around really awkward or minimalist points of interest that don't really provide for good gameplay. So that kind of focus, I think, is a great step in the right direction too. So that's map design talk done and dusted, but now let's talk about traversing those maps. More specifically, movement. This is going to be a controversial one as well. I know that there's a lot of talk from this sort of, you know, old head, old guard Battlefield veteran that's been around since day dot, sort of putting out criticism around the game's movement speed and how the game has paced up over the last few years. I feel like that decision to pace the game up from a movement perspective is going to be pretty hard to avoid. Gaming is getting faster, it's getting more aggressive, and by slowing the game down exceptionally from where we are now, I do feel like that's going to turn a lot of potential players away from the game entirely. In saying that though, when I do play a Battlefield game, I'm not expecting the movement that rivals that of Titanfall. I don't want to see us, you know, zipping around maps with zip lines and, you know, performing these crazy stunts that you would come to expect in a Call of Duty game. I do think there needs to be some degree of limitation and restraint been put on display there. I just don't want to see us move all the way back to the simplicity that is on offer with CSGO. So I'm okay with a little bit of sliding. Controversial, I know, but it does allow for some height and skill gaps in the infantry game. Would I put it to the speed of Battlefield 2042, for example? That would depend on the overall gun time to kill and stuff like that. So a bit of a, you know, balance it as it comes sort of situation. And of course, you can't talk about Battlefield without talking about game modes. And well, of course, the basic ones need to come back. Conquest, Rush. I'd even like to see Operations make a return as well as they were really cool in Battlefield 1 in particular. I'd like to see a return of TDM. Once again, I know controversial for the Battlefield community, but I think it's a, a welcome addition, especially if you've got a good gunplay surrounding it. Domination would be a cool return to see as well. And you know what? Bring back tank and air superiority. Those were cool game modes for our vehicle friends to get in for a bit of romping around. And I gotta be honest, I really enjoyed the air superiority game modes that used to exist once upon a time. They were a hell of a laugh. So yeah, bring those back. And of course, guys, there's also a ton more factors to consider as well at the core of the experience of the game. Things like, you know, options and customizability. But the last couple of big ticket items I really want to mention right here in this video is that for one, we need a server browser with dedicated community servers. I don't think that's an argument anymore. Battlefield definitely played a lot better when servers were available. You could see, you know, what game modes were popping off, what game modes weren't. And you didn't have to sit around twiddling your thumbs for matchmaking to do its thing in these larger scale, you know, lobbies. So yeah, 
yeah, bring back that server browser, bring back dedicated servers. It would go a long, long way. And lastly, I think we need to bring back that community test environment. The CTE for Battlefield 4 was an invaluable resource in, you know, providing feedback on upcoming content and balance passes. And without it, I feel like the quality of some of the Battlefield games, Battlefield 2042 particularly in the balance process, has really fallen by the wayside as a result. So yeah, bring back the CTE, it'd go a long, long way. But whew, God damn, this video turned out way longer than I thought it was going to. So uh, yeah, if you're still around, appreciate you guys for listening to me ramble about what my perfect Battlefield game would look like. If you enjoyed the video, backhand the like button. It does go a long way to supporting the channel. And leave some comments down below as to what you would like to see out of a future Battlefield game. What are the key features? What would it look like? What would it feel like? Let me know. I'd be keen to hear what you guys have to say about that. If you're still around and you did hit that like button, consider subscribing as well, guys. You've made it this far. I'm sure you'll enjoy some of my other content while you're at it as well. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.